Professor Databak, thank you very much for accepting the interview uh, with, to be with us. And it was very exciting that this morning you talk about the uh, outlier analysis. You actually give an innovative uh, lecture on the outlier analysis. Would you like to briefly talk more about it? Well, I'm I'm certainly happy to talk about it. I think that uh, we have traditionally focused on just the the average of patients and not really focused much on the patients that. Uh, don't fit in the big, you know, average. But I think that if we're going to be innovative, we need to take a much closer look at those patients that don't uh, that don't fit, and to understand what is going on with those patients. And I think that it, for a rare disease, I think it's particularly important because we can make progress by analyzing just a small number of patients as opposed to having a huge amount of data over a large, you know, for a large group of patients. Uh, so I think that uh, it's an innovative approach. I think that for a rare disease, it has particular value. Um, although, you know, if you look at other diseases, in fact, uh, it's becoming more apparent that even for other diseases, we need to understand subgroups of patients, and so really this is applicable, I think, in general. Mm -hmm. And we would like to talk more about the controversies and the hot issues that this hotly discussed through the conference yesterday. In the morning, we have the lecture. Uh, we have the studies talk. Uh, this uh, talking about the comparison between partial thymectomy and the total thymectomy. So, from your point of view, which study is maybe more convincing, and which procedure you prefer? Well, uh, I have to. I have to think about that one a little bit. So, first of all, I would say that the data that we heard on partial thymectomy, uh, much of it is still a little bit preliminary, and I think we need to see the full study and really look at it critically uh, before we can really evaluate that completely. Um, the preliminary data that we have is not what I would have expected. So I think that's the benefit of doing studies like this and doing analyses like this. Uh, you know, we can learn, and it doesn't always turn out the way that you expect. Um, I, I still, I'm, I'm having a hard time at this point moving away from complete thymectomy. I still think that that is better. Um, but there may be a role for partial thymectomy in certain situations. I'm not sure that I have enough. I think we need to see the full data and really think about it carefully before we can really define exactly where partial thymectomy fits. So for the following up studies, do you think the classification of the tumor is a consideration? should be included in the following up studies. For example, recently we noticed the publication of the pathology classification from WHO and also the TMN staging, the TMN staging classification from ISAT. So would you like to talk more about this? Well, I don't think that the WHO classification is going to help us much in this regard because you don't really know what the WHO type is until you've taken it out. So you have to already decide how you're going to take it out before you have that information. Uh, I think that the stage classification or anatomic characteristics of the tumor, I think, are likely to help us select those patients for whom a partial thymectomy is useful. Uh, so I do think that's an area that uh, we need to look at in more detail and that, that will be helpful. Specifically for the procedure of the thymectomy, uh, thy thymic surgery, uh, is there any preference for you personally between open surgery, wet surgery, and robotic surgery? Well, um, 
I also think it's very interesting for 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 me at least. I do a great deal of minimally invasive surgery. The vast majority of lung cancer surgery that I do is VATS, and and we have an active robotics program for lung surgery and so forth. However, for thymic malignancies, I usually do an open approach through a sternotomy. Um, I think that we can do a more complete resection. Uh, I also think that the difference between a minimally invasive approach and a sternotomy is not very big, as opposed to lung surgery, where the difference between a minimally invasive approach and a thoracotomy is a huge difference for a patient. So those are the reasons why it's interesting for me that on the one hand, I'm a big proponent of minimally invasive surgery, and yet, when it comes to thymic surgery, I'm fairly selective about which patients get a minimally invasive approach. Right. <clears throat> and final, final question. In this conference, we noticed it is exciting to see many Chinese uh, uh, new studies in thymic uh, tumor. So would you like to give your comments on the development of the thymic tumor research in China? Well, uh, this has been an exciting conference for me just to, uh, you know, hear various results presented and to see how we are advancing our uh, understanding. Um, but in particular, I think that the number of papers, the number of studies, the quality of the studies from China has been very impressive. Uh, of course, we're having the conference in China, so it's a little bit easier for people from China to come. That's part of the reason um, that was part of the idea of having the conference in China. But it's very exciting. And in particular, I am very impressed by the organization that has happened within China, the chart Chinese Association for Research in the Thymus is a very well-organized, high-quality association of people, and the amount of work that they have done to get organized and to develop the tools to do the sort of science that they have done in a short period of time is really very impressive. Thank you very much for your insight. For more, inf for more information, please uh, visit our website. Thank you.